address Honorable Premier. Thank you. 
potential threat to get out lucrative tourist uh, industry. Yet they are themselves object of tourism. Remember, Ralph and Henry have powerfully described the continuities between the city's apartheid past, slaughtering one white person, saying, and the ways in which its present, its present day racial geography continues to be reaffirmed and reasserted through the sharing up of economic privilege. Cape Town is a city that continues to be shredded by the complexities of divisions and violence. The violence of the city of its extreme of wealth and poverty and the irreconcilable realities that exist inside of these extremes mark everyone each day in ways that are not always clear, conscious or visible. It feels like a city that is ready to burst with the violent force of the irrepressible realness of its history. Mostly everything remains color-coded according to previous apartheid race categories. I'm raising this because every time you speak about this, you speak, you come in and you say that this is, we want to bring about this. But the fact of the matter is, what happened in, in the past has a direct uh, uh, impact in what is happening now. This is visible in every sphere of society, from who works in restaurants and in their kitchens, and who owns them, who cleans the roads and sidewalks, and who are shop owners, whose children are cared for by nannies, and whose children have to be fair and your friend for them who have to fend themselves. Raising this matter, that these members who are here are not actors, on the law members. They are members who actually understand what poverty is, what inequality means, what injustice is to them. And they have no, they have no reason to come here and act as members of the saints. These are members who are born. Some of these members were born in townships, most of them. In areas, I was born in Kukwano, 97 Block 1, a dusty town, township, just a throw away from uh, an ordinance race, which is one of the oldest men in the uh, city. And we did not enjoy anything except to make the life better for ourselves. We had to make sure that we understand that. Uh, as a people who want to survive. We survive, we are programs. We understand the pain of going to bed hungry. And some of you have no understanding of that. Yeah. Because in your schools, we are taught that uh, blacks are inferior. Mm. Yeah. I, will, I, will, I will, I'm going to tell you about the speech in 1985, on the 18th of August from Peter B. Bolton. And some of you were taught this history in your schools. And some of you seated here, growing up, understanding, of course, when you see a black person, you don't see us as people who are capable. You don't see us as people who can do anything good. It always has to be you. And that is why I don't remember uh, uh, Peter Way had the guts to say that uh, remember uh, the member should come, uh, William, should come and read with her the Bella Bill. Because alone, you are not good enough to understand what is it. Yeah. But the only when we are talking, and the right person we are to be. These are some of the things that we've got to get out of our system. But we keep bringing them in the house. You keep creating a situation that we are inferior. You see us as inferior. And there's nothing else that we see in us. But I will, I will, I will, I will talk to you about this. 
things people call it. Colors that shape their life. 